Ladies and gentlemen, particularly Councillor uh, Pang for uh, your introduction. I appreciate the remarks very, very much. Um, it's uh, tremendous to be here. I'm uh, a very happy uh, resident of Osman and uh, delighted to have this honour tonight of uh, addressing you with the Osman Address for 2010. The subject tonight is giving and community. And uh, it would be appropriate to start the community because around here tonight we have, obviously, a Muslim community. Muslim is unique. I have been a resident here for nearly 40 years. I came from uh, way down south in a place called Adelaide with my wife. We uh, have adapted to this community brilliantly. There are very few places in Australia that have the close living, the amenities that are provided by the the local government, your council, and the council is here tonight, that represent a very, very unique community. What is particularly special about the community is the vision. Not only do we have a suburb that has preserved its heritage, it has a direction of where it's going, exemplified without doubt by the village atmosphere. Very few places you can go in Australia today you can get delivered, the chemist's uh, supplies, the doctor will make late night calls. You don't really find you're being alienated from what happens as a community here. The service culture provided by the retailers, provided by the professionals, provided by the transport, provided by the many uh, public issues the council deals with is enormous. It does provide an infrastructure. More importantly, it defines us as a community and defines us particularly as people living in that community. And more importantly, it's not that we need to enjoy this, we need to think about where it goes for us and what we can do for it. Because the heritage of Mosman is a dependent upon us and the thousands of other ratepayers that live in this community and what we can give back to it. Because that's what our forebearers did for it and that's what we must do for it going forward. I just take the example of the Muslim art prize going to Zan mentioned since 1947, one of the richest art prizes in depth of history in any local government in Australia. Not necessarily rich in money, but certainly rich in prestige has become the basis of the collection that exists at this gallery and will become the backbone of what Mosman can become, in my opinion, is not only one of the greatest cities in Australia, but become a culturally based city that can not only blend its commercialism, its, uh, its, its atmosphere of urban living, but can be culturally enriched by all of us as great players. So I now talk about you know, the art class. Well, 60 years ago, there was none. Look at it today. It's the backbone of this institution, this building we're here tonight. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a journey through philanthropy, because some of you may or may, know not, may not know just how it sort of sits in the world and what it means to communities um, throughout the world. And I want to just give you, I'm probably going to bore you a little bit with statistics, and so, Please don't fall asleep on me and don't give up, because it does lead to a very good conclusion. You look at it now, uh, Australia gives $5.7 billion a year to philanthropy, to register charities. The United Kingdom, $16 billion. The United States, $281 billion a year. This is these are uh, 2008 statistics. Percentage of taxpayers who make donations, Australia 35%, United Kingdom 65%, United States 72%. Then you get to the average amount per donor given to the communities, registered charities, Australia $523 per taxpayer, United Kingdom $715, America $1,910 per taxpayer. Of the 12.6 million individual income tax returns, over 8 million 
in Australia, 63% of them do not claim a deduction for a charitable gift or registered charity. It's way, way one of the worst of the developed worlds. A fourfold increase in giving to over 1.5% of incomes would have a very limited impact on most lifestyles. It would have a significant positive impact on the community sector. There's also research that indicates that high net worth individuals in Australia are giving significantly less than their contemporaries in other Western countries. And I do not mean that comment to be criticism of anyone here tonight. It's more to do with the fact that in Australia, the very top end, and I'm talking about the top 20, the top 50, are not renowned as their peer group internationally in the other OECD countries are giving to the same percentage. Uh, that is changing, and that's where it gets interesting. Whilst many are doing great good for the community, it's generally clear that it's a myth that Australians are generous. But that's an historical view, and I think that is changing more. In the 1990s, there was a cry for this country because we didn't have a, a way of giving. So there was uh, no way of giving easily tax deductible gifts without setting up complicated trust structures. In 2001, the government brought in an entity originally called a prescribed private fund, now known as a private ancillary fund, a PAF. The introduction of private ancillary funds has had a significant impact on the philanthropic sector. Since their establishment, over 800 prescribed ancillary funds have been created. They have aggregate funds now committed to the government of over $2 billion, and they've distributed over $650 million to the community to register charities. Quite extraordinary in the space of just 10 years. There are thousands of families in Australia who could create a prescribed necessary fund, but for various reasons they get to do so. There should not be 800 PAFs in this country. There should be 8,000. Aside from getting involved with exciting community projects, one of the key benefits of establishing a family foundation is the educational benefits to children and future generations of Australia. These include learning the responsibility of wealth, something that I don't think I was that well trained on, engagement with the community, understanding the needs of others, a very big plus, investment strategies, budgeting, how the board operates, which could be simply around the kitchen table, collective decision making, unifying a family and common goal, and discussing local and world affairs. That's what can come out of setting up a trust, an institution where you can give. And I'm not talking about serious amounts of money. It is not about millions of dollars. It's not about hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's a matter of thousands of dollars. Whether it's one, two, three, four, five, you can still do it, and it can have a huge effect on this country. It can have a huge effect on the community in which we live. I just feel there's more consideration needs to be given by many families to how much of the wealth is left to children. I have uh, gone on the record a number of times in interviews and said, you know, I don't want to make my kids too rich because I don't see I have the right to take away their decision making and their choices in life by giving them a silver spoon or a uh, poison chalice. I think there is a, a lot to be said in that change in view in Australia. I quote Warren Buffett, who will be no myth to most people in this room, who said very famously about uh, philanthropy and children and families, leave enough to your children to do anything in life but not enough to do nothing. <laughs> there are many benefits to establish a private private story fund. These include an efficient method of establishing a perpetual trust control by a family. All the donations are tax deductible. Gifts can be accumulated to create more capital, providing capacity to make more effective and large long-term grants. The required annual rate of distribution has been established at a very reasonable 5% a year. So you put the money aside, you only have to spend 5% a year, so you can consolidate the fund. The trustees can choose the recipients of the grants, they must be registered charities. I've always had the view that you know, I, 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 I paid a lot of tax in my life, I'm sure like everyone else in this room. And what does do you after a while is you pay a lot of tax, we don't see much evidence and we can be all very critical of governments. But the end result is to establish a private and fund and you can decide where you want to give it 
and don't give it to consolidate revenue, and you can direct more in your opinion as to what's worth the recipients of your tax dollars. Big plus. The other thing is they remain private, an issue that uh, I uh, confront regularly. Do I actually uh, hide myself under the table and don't tell what I do? Or do I stand publicly and declare what I do? There's a very strong emerging opinion that more of us that stand up and talk about giving, more of us talk about what we give and where we give it, creates more of a culture in training generations in the future. I don't believe there's a lot to be said by hiding under the table about it. We should be proud of what we do. We should equally be proud of what it can mean to the community. Uh, the one thing about the funds is you don't need to uh, solicitate other donations from the public. The income and capital gains tax from investments are tax exempt. There's only greater funds available for distribution. One of the wonderful things, the government doesn't get your tax dollars, you get it to spend. Cash refunds receive the dividend imputation credits. How much of this we lose these days in imputation credits? Or well, we get those back, we can give those back to the community. It assists in, fam in a family of instilling an ethos of philanthropy in future generations. It's a very educated, very important educational tool for children. So that gets me to the um, to the broad that's the broad canvas on philanthropy. Now if I can be a little bit more exact, I can come to what does it really mean within Australia. On average, Australians donate approximately 0.43 of their taxable income, less than half a percent to registered charities. The average donation made by taxpayers to registered charities was $532 for men and $514 for women, neck for neck. But then it gets interesting. On average, male taxpayers donate 0.35% of their income compared to females who donate 0.54% of their income. Nearly 50% 50, 50 more than males of female taxpayers. The average donation by taxpayers, by state, and this is where, where, where comparisons get really fascinating. New South Wales, the average taxpayer, $788, paid to registered charities. Tasmania comes second, $513. The Australian Capital Territory comes third, $455. Despite the mythology of the Victorians and uh, richer are the bigger benefactors and uh, greater philanthropists, $433. Queensland, $371, less than half of what New South Wales people pay. Quite fascinating stats, and you think of where the money is in this country. Donations of percentage of income. New South Wales is 0.6% of income. Tasmania, 0.4% of income. ACT, 0.4% of income. Victoria, 0.3% of income. Queensland, 0.2% of income. Less than half that in New South Wales. Which gets me to one of the little facts that you unearth when you go through too many documents and dealing with the government stats decision in Canberra. The postcode with the highest total of people who gave in 2008-2009 Pre, and we're going to look at this pre global financial crisis, was NSW 2088. Yay! 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 Which gave $315 million. An average per taxpayer in this community, $41,000. The highest average gift in the country. That is very, very significant. Not only is it significant, it's, it's even more significant when you compare to the previous year, which was New South Wales 2027, point Piper, who only gave an average of $25,000 per taxpayer. So where does that leave us? You can all take a bow. I think that is just a tremendous salute to this, this, this municipality. So that's getting to philanthropy. And uh, you know, I think it's a very, very uh, important factual basis that we as a community stand out as doing our bit. But having said that, without any, any, any suggestion of criticism here, I think we can do a little better. Which leads me to uh, putting my money where my mouth is, as one does when one uh, 
place on this responsibility of making an awesome address. I'd like to challenge the audience tonight. I'd like to suggest to the council and the councillors, or whoever else wants to match it, the Balmass Foundation is prepared to put up dollar for dollar for the employment for a three year contract for a manager of philanthropy to deal with the community, to solicit requests, to try and build up the capital in this uh, community, to endow it with a creative policy, and to have an ongoing commitment to building the arts in this community. To make Osman not only what it is today, but successfully over the next couple of generations, the preeminent, preeminent local government that has a very strong cultural base. So if it's a commitment of fifty, sixty thousand dollars to employ one, I give it to the councillors, the mayor, the management of this community, the Balance Foundation will put up all the dollar and anyone else like to manage me tonight or next week, we'd love to do it. Thank you. The other thing I want to mention is that The other thing I'd like to mention is that a little bit of a hobby horse of mine for the last uh, six or eight years has been going on a bit of a mission to collect art for the latest Muslim. Having been brought up in South Australia with a not strong artistic background, having been to school, not being really probably endowed with the cultural view as much as probably I became in later life, <coughs> I took the view that wouldn't it be interesting for Muslim to have a collection in this gallery? which actually reflected Mosman at various stages in its life. So that students could come, who live in this community, come to the gallery and say, well, look, I can look at a Wapa Street, I can look at the Moral Beach, or I can look at the uh, Toronto Park, I can look at uh, Bradley's Head, I can look at the Spit, and see how an artist painted in 1920, how another artist painted in 1950, how the artists in the early camps painted the beaches down here and the, uh, and, and the heads from Austin. And I started collecting this art, and um, I've been doing this for a long period of time. And uh, the whole idea is to make art not be something on the wall, but make it educationally important so that our children and our children's children who remain in the suburb, or it doesn't matter if they remain in the suburb, can come back and renew their heritage by communicating through art with the place they live in, they can actually look at a painting on the wall by street and say, hold on, there's an old head there, and there's, uh, there's, 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 there's uh, well, the Spit Bridge, or whether it's uh, um, um, any other artist that's painted Muslim. And then by doing that, have a much more enriched view about their community through the art that's been done. And one of the best painted suburbs in Australia by a country mile is Muslim. It's been the province of art since the early days of the artist's camps. Having put that collection together, I'm nearly completing it. I've still got another one or two years collecting. I'm happy to announce tonight that uh, privately I'll be donating that collection to the art gallery. It was a work that I've become attached to, I've got to admit, because I look at it every day and I think, look at Streeton's view of this, look at, uh, look at um, uh, I can't even name the artist, there's so many of them. But if you go back and you look at it, it says Maurice, but it doesn't reside with me, it belongs to this community. I will be donating it, by the time it's donated over the next three years, it'll be worth over a million dollars. It will be an important cornerstone for building up this institution. And I'm delighted to announce that tonight. And I've had early discussions with uh, Council and I get to sort of consolidate that. But as an example of giving, I'm not here giving you a lecture on giving, I'm actually putting my money where my mouth is. Uh, I do that with my family's support. I do that because of what I have got out of Mosman. And I want to say to you tonight, that it's enriching to give as to what I've received in 40 years of living in this community, and I thank you for being part of that. Thank you.